Hi, I'm on site at Embedded World 2025, and joining me today is Ryan Scott, Marketing and Business Development for Motor Control and Drive Applications at Corvo. We're going to be talking about Corvo's AC272-350, its three-phase VLDC motor driver, finding out more about its key features and what makes it so special. Ryan, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Could you start by giving a quick introduction to yourself? Absolutely. Um, my name is Ryan Scott. As you mentioned, I'm in the motor control division at Corvo. Um, I've been in the industry for 20, 30 years. A uh, variety of roles in microcontrollers, uh, gate driver products, specifically focusing on the application of motor control. Great, thank you. And could you also introduce the company Corvo? Absolutely. So I'm happy to represent Corvo. Corvo itself is only a 10-year-old company. It was a combination of RFMD and Triquent Semiconductor who came together. Uh, we have a variety of products, mostly in communications, which is our most known products, uh, most well-known products. But definitely, we've introduced new power management products, so we have motor control products, battery management products. We also have um, PMIX ICs that we manufacture. So a whole variety of new power management products to complement the communications portfolio that we had. And I understand you've very recently announced this motor driver? Yes, it's, it's brand new. It's a brand new motor driver. Um, so we actually just announced it yesterday. So we're, you know, gearing up all our eval kits and stocking up with DigiKey partners so that we can make sure that customers have them and can work with the new devices. Mm -hmm. And could you talk us through what the key features of this motor driver are? Yeah, absolutely. So first off, the driver itself is a 160 volt tolerable uh, driver, which means you have a very wide input range that's available to the device. So it can be used in 36 volt battery applications, 48 volt, even 84, 92 volt. We had customers that came to us with basically designs where they needed to do a lot of regenerative bra braking and energy conservation. And so that meant that they needed more than the typical limits. And so that was really what prompted us to bring in this new 160 volt device. And how does it compare with other solutions on the market? Well, uh, differing than other solutions on the market, beyond just the input voltage, the key parts are it has a fully flexible power manager, which allows for the power not only to power the internal devices that are available, your gate drive, your, um, you know, some of the different um, uh, features that you have that are IC related that'll be at lower voltages like 3.3, 5 volts. These types of lower things are also taken care of, but you can also power your microcontroller as well from the device. So if a customer starts with this as part of their architecture in mind, you can dramatically decrease the number of components that you would require. We had our lead customer told us that they actually took away 40 discrete components, four zero discrete components by this one IC. So that saved them a lot of space, a lot of development effort, and, and hopefully good total cost of ownership in their solution. That's great. Yeah. You just touched upon it, but could you elaborate a little bit more about why high voltage motor control is so important? Well, it's becoming increasingly important because what's happening is, is we start to reduce more and more smaller engines, smaller combustion engines, which you know obviously don't, aren't the best for the environment. Uh, we see a lot of manufacturers starting to produce very high power motors to replace these in traditional smaller combustion engines. So higher power, that's where the 160 comes in, the higher voltage, because you can see it in small lawn tractors that people use in gardening, different tools that uh, used to be only like take a, take a big motor, maybe even into the forest, to help cut trees, and now you don't have to do that because they basically have larger batteries with much more energy that can do essentially the same function that the combustion engines were doing before. So we see this, even though it's a relatively smaller portion of the market, we do feel that it will grow in time, and we do see it already growing. I think that's a really good example, a really good tangible example of the, yeah. the evolution. Absolutely, yes. So why don't we talk a little bit about the configurable power manager? Mm -hmm. How does it improve system efficiency and power handling? Okay. 
So again, when you have the high voltages, um, you need to uh, break them down efficiently. What you don't want is your DC to DC to become your hot spot on your board. So you actually need a very efficient power manager. Um, so this offers that, and as you go into lower voltages where, say, a switching regulator might be more efficient, or even an LDO, a low dropout regulator, might be more efficient, we have all of those options built into the configurable power manager. So you're at each stage of the power conversion, you're doing it the most efficient way possible. So that's one thing. Another aspect of it, though, on the gate driver itself is these are programmable. So if you can program the current rating that turns on the different inverter stages and basically tune that to the exact MOSFETs or IGBTs or whatever your power device, if you can tune it appropriately, then it's not just our device that is you know, efficient, but what really happens is the entire system gets more efficient because now the inverter is more efficient. And then if you can run a clean inverter, ultimately you can run a motor more efficiently. So through basically implementing um, I'm going to use the term clean, but more precise uh, current uh, control during the gate drive stage of the circuit, you can effectively increase the efficiency of the entire system from the electronic controls to the inverter to the motor itself. And the entire system can grow in, you know, five to seven percent efficiency, which is a very important. It's longer battery life. All these things contribute. Definitely. And, and so what are the key use cases that you see? Um, key use cases, uh, lead customers, heavy uh, lawn tractors that, you know, they don't want to have combustions in engines in them anymore. They run off of 84 volt batteries. Uh, we have customers that are using large, I'll call them large power tools that are used for construction or demolition purposes, like big cutoff saws. Those are kind of key because they're, again, they're just big batteries, you know, and they want to control them effectively and still have a good portable device. So. Those are the real key ones. The other ones that we're going at are that are, I won't say more obvious, but e-bikes, e-transportation. All of these systems run off of 48 volt batteries, 36, 48. Um, but those types of things along with other robotics with these types of batteries can benefit from that device. Mm -hmm. And so for the engineers who may be watching, what are some key considerations that they should have in mind when integrating this? Um, well, the key consideration is, is to understand all of the different components that are already part of the device. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of the power management is already integrated, so you can control your own micro with that. You don't have to add extra. Um, we have other features that are built in, which are really signal conditioning features that would typically, before you would put those out in the circuits, and I'm talking about things like operational amplifiers, uh, single-ended uh, amplifiers, like differential amplifiers, ones that can all be used to basically either read current measurements back from the circuit, they're built into the device. So you don't have to do those externally, you'll have more components built in. But from an engineer's point of view, the one thing that I would really think about is too, just the actual robustness of the device. Because it's built on what we call SOI or silicon on insulator technology, it is very immune to what we call like a negative ground bounce, which over time can create a situation where, you know, there, there can be damage done in the gate driver portion. So because it's built on this SOI technology, it's more robust and basically can immune to those types of parasitics which build that environment. So it's a very um, just reliable, trustworthy product for these types of high voltage applications. And following on from that, how does it simplify the design process for the engineers that are working on these battery powered applications? Start with the GUI in mind, and you can see where the device is and the different components. And they basically can set, they can look at the different needs that they have for their amplifiers. You can program the gain that you need for each one of these. You can program uh, PWM signals, uh, slew rates, you know, a variety of different things. And by doing that uh, internal and programming it to the device, you're not going to have to sit and replace and play with a bunch of external components and mix and, you know, kind of trial by error, kind of say, but rather you can program it and then fine tune your design very quickly as you go. So the idea is to really speed up the design cycle for the engineer. That's great. Well, thank you, Ryan, for providing that overview. Before we finish, could you talk about your partnership with DigiKey? 
Absolutely. So we definitely rely on DigiKey um, to be the one-stop quick source for our products for our customers. We see that time and time again that we know that they can get our products quickly from DigiKey and try them out even before our sales guys have a chance to pick up the phone and reach out. They're getting a call from a customer because, well, they got something that was advertised on DigiKey or they purchased from DigiKey, received next day, and now they have real questions. And so it's really great because for us, it kind of creates that pull for us so that we can respond with, with, you know, with a solution after they've already seen it as opposed to you know, walking up, hey, I've got a new, new thing that may or may not, you know, they already know because they learn from DigiKey and then come to us and we can respond to that. So it makes us more efficient in our go-to-market. Well, thank you, Ryan, for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, it. my pleasure.